One of the advantages of the windbrake is that it has high braking power even though we press the pedal not very hard. This can happen because the windbrake utilizes wind pressure to push the brake pad. Then how the wind can be used on the braking system. In this video we will discuss how the wind brake works. The wind brake system replaces the hydraulic brakes on trucks or other big hitting vehicles. So, it's a control system, not an actuator. That is, this wind brake system is a mechanism for moving the brakes on the vehicle. Generally, the actuator used in the wind brake is a drum brake system. For example, on this truck we see a set of drum brakes, where at the end of the brake shoe there is a cam. If this cam rotates, the cam mold will push the two brake shoes in opposite directions so that the brake can activate. While the cam on the brake actuator is connected to a pusher arm. So, to activate this drum brake we need to push this pusher arm. This is the job of the wind brake. The wind brake will push the drum brake actuator arm with high pressure so that the brake shoe is able to press the drum firmly. That will create considerable braking power. To discuss the wind brake, we start from the engine part. Here there is an air compressor. Typically, these compressors are connected to the engine pulleys via a belt fan. Its function is to increase the wind pressure in the wind brake system. Then, from the compressor there are three hoses, one inlet hose and two outlet hoses. The second outlet hose is used to deliver high-pressure wind to the air tank. In the air tank, this component serves to store the wind that will be used in the brake system. However, the name of the air must contain contaminants, especially air. We know that water is a substance that cannot be compressed, so if this water gets into the system it can damage the components of the wind brake. To solve this, before entering the tank, the pressurized wind will be passed on the air dryer. This component will separate the air and other contaminants, so that what comes out here is air, and the air is discharged through the exhaust hose. Then we return to the compressor. The compressor inlet hose was connected to a valve mechanism named governor. This serves to keep the wind pressure on the system so as not to over. The working pressure of the wind brake is in the range of 100 to 150 psi. Thus, when the pressure inside the system exceeds 150 psi, the valve here will close, and it will close the air path from the outside. However, it will open the air path of the air dryer. Well, so this governor has four channels. One inlet from the outside air, one outlet to the compressor, one channel from the tank, and one channel from the air dryer. The line from the tank serves to control the governor valve. The location is upstairs. In this upper chamber there is a membrane that if the pressure in this space is greater, then this membrane will move down, and this is connected to the air tank. So, when the pressure reaches 150 psi, this membrane moves down. That pushes the piston to also move down. As a result, the inlet is closed, and the air duct of the dryer is open. In this position, the air will rotate from the air dryer to the compressor and rotate again to the air dryer so that it does not increase the air pressure. When the pressure inside the system starts to drop, this membrane will again be pushed upwards so that the gradient gradually reopens the inlet, and this will increase the air from the outside. Then, we move to the cabin area. Here there is a brake valve that is located under the brake pedal. So, when we step on the brake pedal, it will press the piston that is inside this brake valve. If we open the inside, the mechanism is more or less like this. There are two inlet channels from the tank and two outlet channels leading to the relay valve. In the pedal position is not stepped on, the piston wall will close the inlet on these two channels. When we step on the brake pedal, the piston will move down, and it will open its channel. The position of the piston affects how wide this opening is. So, when we step on the brake pedal a little, then the channel will open slightly. This will limit the volume of passing air. 
But if we press the brake pedal to the full, then the channel opens wider and it will increase the volume of passing air. This mechanism aims to make the brakes have variable strength. So, the driver can adjust the braking according to road conditions. Then, from the brake valve, we go to the relay valve. It serves to trim the air path in order to get to the actuator quickly. Because if this air has to go to the pedal first, it can cause braking delays. With this relay, the air from the tank can be directly channeled to the actuator, and the channel from the brake valve can be minimized to accelerate the flow. When the pedal is stepped on, air will flow from the brake valve outlet to the relay valve signal channel. This airflow will compress the valve underneath. The pressed valve will open the main line from the tank going to the brake chamber. The brake chamber is a component for converting air pressure into mechanical movement. Air from the relay valve will press the space in the chamber so that the membrane is pushed. It will push the lever in front of it so that the brakes can activate. Well, before entering the brake chamber, the air will pass through the quick release valve. This component serves to divide the air pressure into two chambers and to normalize the air pressure when the brake is turned off. So, when the brake is turned off, the pressure in the valve relay drops and the piston reverses upwards. It will close the main line and air comes out from the bottom of the relay valve. From the back room, however, it was too far away. So, to speed up the air release process, air will be discharged through this quick release valve. This component works automatically when the air pressure of the relay valve drop. So, in the wind brake system, how much wind pressure has a big effect on braking performance? The wind pressure inside this tank must reach a minimum of 100 psi before the vehicle is operational to perform prime braking. Therefore, before the road vehicle, the engine will be started for a long time. One of them is to fill the air in this tank. That's an animation of how the wind brake works. Let's all add to our vision.